Hi, this is Paul Nielsen with Husky Corporation. I am making a video on how to change the uh, pressure, uh, no pressure, no flow cap on a 1AS nozzle. Um, this is for Porter Manufacturing down in Texas. So uh, this is a, a similar nozzle, might have a few details different than what you actually have, uh, but it is, um, Going to be representative of what we're going to ask you to do. Uh, the tools that I need are a Phillips head screwdriver and a scribe. We should have provided uh, some scribes in the box when we shipped you the replacement equipment. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, remove the nozzle from the hose if it's already installed and then remove the plastisol guard, the rubber guard on the outside. So after the guard is removed, um, I find it easier to clamp it in a vise. So that's what I'll be doing today. And you want to make sure that your four screws are level with your table. So the first thing that you do is uh, you unscrew your four screws. and then you can lift the cap up. This is where the scribe comes in. As you lift it up, you can see this uh, little pin there. That pin holds some ball bearings in place in the white plunger. You don't want those ball bearings to fall out of place. So as you remove the, the cap, put the scribe in the same hole that you took the pin out of to make sure that you don't lose those ball bearings. So when you remove the pressure cap, the, the diaphragm assembly from your nozzle. Um, this is, uh, make sure you put this in a, in a place where you're not gonna confuse it because there's no real great way to tell uh, the good ones from the bad ones uh, unless you take the whole thing apart. So, um, we'll go get a, a new pressure diaphragm cap and, oops, I dropped a screw. Um, so here are some features on the cap that you need to look for. Underneath here, uh, right in this area, there's an O-ring around that orifice. You need to make sure that that O-ring is there. We should have sent a bag of replacement O-rings. And um, if it is not there, if it got lost in shipping, take one of those O-rings and put it in that uh, little cavity there. The other side does not have that orifice, so it only goes on that one side. The other feature that we should look for is the bump on the top of the cap. So that bump needs to be facing the hexagonal body cap on the nozzle. So when we orient it, we need to have the O-ring and the bump towards the inlet of the nozzle on this side. So. To install the new cap, you take it out of the box, you inspect it for any damage, make sure that your uh, diaphragm holes are lined up with the mounting pattern. And then uh, the way that we do it at the factory is we hold the cap so that O-ring can't fall out when you turn it upside down. And you put the pin back in that hole just as you're sliding the scribe out. And then you can put it down and we've provided metric screws for you, so these screws should get a lock washer. Um, and the metric ones that we sent are just one size bigger than what we typically build the nozzles with. So you can see on the nozzle body, uh, the holes are cast into that uh, piece of metal. So we need to cut new threads to make sure that we have the solid connection that you'll need for a long service life of this nozzle. So after you uh, get a metric thread and a lock washer, all you do is cinch it down and uh, do your entire bolt pattern. Uh, if you want to do um, an X pattern, that is probably ideal, but I'm not sure that that makes a huge difference at the end of the day. So um, I did drop a screw, so I'm only going to be putting three in. But 
after you uh, tighten down all four screws, you're able to put on your guard again. And the way that I typically do that is uh, slide it over the spout, pull it as far as I can, and then use this long tail to get some leverage to pull it back onto the nozzle. You gotta make sure that uh, you don't have it folded or twisted because that'll just get in the way later. We're gonna test fluid on this particular nozzle so it's really slippery. Use that tail in the table to pull it back over the nozzle. Make sure you get the, uh, the holes lined up. Uh, then you can put pipe dope on the hose, re retighten it, uh, and test this nozzle. You know, I think Porter Manufacturing's testing that they typically do before they ship their, their systems is going to be sufficient. But uh, if you're worried about it, if you put, um, you know, we test at 50, 50 PSI of pressure to look for leaks, uh, you can put 50 PSI of pressure into this nozzle and let it sit for a while to see if the spout fills up uh, with any fuel. So um, I hope this helps. Uh, my name is Paul Nilsson at Husky Corporation, P-N-I-L-S-E-N -E at husky.com if you want to email me or my direct line here at the factory is area code 636-825-7213. I uh, appreciate your time.